Hi there. Today we're going to talk just a little bit about multiple unit multipliers. Now multiple unit multipliers are basically used when we need to make more than one conversion. If you're just going from let's say uh, feet to inches, you know how many inches are in a foot and that's not all that difficult. But if we were to go from yards to inches or miles to inches or kilometers to inches, then there would be more than one conversion involved there and we would have to know some things to be able to make that conversion happen. So here's just an example. For instance, if we want to change five hours into seconds, we have to first change the hours into minutes and then the minutes into seconds. So there's actually two conversions involved here. There's a couple things we know and we can use those to our advantage because we know them. We know that one hour has 60 minutes and one minute has 60 seconds. So we set it up so that it looks like this. We have five hours and then we know 60 minutes is one hour. Now notice, and I'm going to draw a line here and put a one there. Notice that hours is on the top here but it's on the bottom here and the reason we do that is so that we can cross them out and get rid of hours. It's like we're dividing out the hours if that makes sense. We've done that before when we divided out um, variables, okay? So we have five hours, 60 minutes is one hour, and then guess what? We want to get the seconds, so we're going to put the minutes down here, and one minute is 60 seconds. So we take hours and hours and minutes and minutes out, and we're left with five times 60 times 60, and the only measurement that we have there is the seconds. No hours, no minutes left. We have one times one on the bottom. So we just do the math and we end up with 300, five times 60, times 60, which ends up to be 1,800 seconds. Now, what's a unit multiplier? Right here. These, these two here are what you would consider unit multipliers. They're also what we use to do the conversions. That's what we use to do the conversions. Okay, let's look at a second example. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and some of you are going to come up to me and try to get me to sign off on your notes without them, but I am going to require that you have every single example in your notes because each one of them is different. So you might as well sign on for the long haul here. Okay, what if? What if you were to find the area of a room in square feet? Pretty easy. But then they say, oh, we want to put carpet down and carpet is sold in square yards so you're going to have to convert from square feet into square yards so here's the room that we're going to put the carpet in it is a 9 by 16 room so we have 16 feet by 9 feet and we end up with 16 times 9 times feet times feet we have 144 square feet or feet squared. Okay, and that's where we want to put our carpet. We want to put our carpet here. But guess what? The carpet is sold in square yards. So now we have to do a conversion to change it into square yards. So we have 144 square feet. We know that one yard is three feet. We also know that a square yard is three feet by three feet, which of course is nine feet squared important to know that. So here's our conversion process. It's pretty easy. Okay, so we start out we have 144 and notice I put feet feet instead of feet squared. It just helps me remember when I'm over here making these putting in these uh, conversions. Okay, that I remember that feet has to be in there twice. So I have one yard three feet. One yard three feet. Notice feet on the top feet on the bottom, feet on the top, feet on the bottom. Cross out the feet, left with yards times yards, which is what we want. We want yards squared. We end up with 144 yards times yards, which is yards squared, over 9 times 9. Now the feet are gone because we have crossed them out. So we're left with 144 over 9. And if we do the math, that's 16 square yards. So if you were to buy carpet, and if that carpet was $10 a square yard, it would be 16 times 10, which would be $160 of carpet that you're going to put down on your floor. 
So that's a very, very common use for that particular conversion. Now, we've been talking about square. What happens if we have volume? And volume, of course, you know is not square, it's cubed. So let's see what happens with this. This is example three. You have a sidewalk that measures six feet by three feet by 0.5 feet. That's actually one half of a foot, okay? It's one half of a foot. So its volume is six times three times 0.5 six feet times three feet times 0.5 feet. So we end up with six times three, which is 18 feet squared, times the 0.5, which of course is basically cutting it in half. So we end up with nine feet cubed, because this has a foot and this has two. Okay, so to convert to cubic yards, we have to remember we have some information here, okay? A cubic yard of concrete would have, okay, one yard, three feet. One cubic yard is going to be, if you had a square yard, it'd be feet by feet. But it's a cubic yard, so it's going to be three feet by three feet by three feet, which is 27 cubic feet, or 27 feet, feet, feet. Now, when we go to convert that into cubic yards, we're going to do this. We're going to go nine cubic foot, which is nine feet, feet, feet. One yard, three feet. One yard, three feet. One yard, three feet. Cross out the feet. Leave the yards. You end up with nine times one times one times one times yards times yards times yards. That's nine yards cubed over three times three times three, which is 27. Do the math. Just reduce. You end up with 9 over 27 cubic yards, which is just one-third of a cubic yard. Now, that doesn't seem like very much, but it is a, a clump of concrete. It is one-third of a yard by one-third of a yard by one-third of a yard, if you were to clump it all into a, a, a single geometrical shape. That's a lot of concrete, actually. Okay, example four. <coughs> Excuse me. Example four, let's convert 36 kilometers per hour to meters per second. And I'm sorry that doesn't look very good when I wrote it. I kind of bumbled on that. So I'm going to write it again so that you're sure that you get the right thing. It's 36 kilometers per hour to meters per second. Conversions, well, we know some things here. We know that 1,000 meters equals one kilometer because we know from our chart. We know that one hour is 60 minutes and we know that one minute is 60 seconds. Now, we want to get to meters per second. That's what we're looking for. So when we set up our conversions, that's going to be something that's in our mind. So we have 36 kilometers per one hour. Remember that was the conversion that we had, 36 kilometers per hour. <clears throat> so now we have 36 kilometers in one hour and 1,000 meters in one kilometer. We have one hour, 60 minutes, and one minute, 60 seconds. It takes a while to get used to it. Um, these, uh, I had somebody in a, a class one time teach me and uh, I don't know if it will help you or not, but if it, if it does, boy, I'll, I'm certainly all for it. But what they did is they called this the railroad. And they actually drew this line all the way across solid, like this. And then they could see 36 kilometers, kilometers, um, hours, hours, minutes, minutes and they could see they drew it like that and if that helps you to draw it that way i'm all for it that's that's perfectly fine with me whichever works the best notice that we're able to eliminate kilometers and kilometers hours and hours minutes and minutes we are left with meters and seconds which is exactly what we want we want it we want it to reduce to or converted to meters per second so now we just do the math we have 36 times 1000 times meters. And then on the bottom we have 60 times 60 times seconds. So we take 30, 36 times 1,000 is 36,000 and 60 times 60 is 360. 
we have meters per second, which is what we want. Now we can, we can eliminate one zero simply by crossing it out, and then the rest of it we have to divide, and we're left with 10 meters per second, and that's the conversion we wanted. We wanted 36 kilometers per hour converted to um, meters per second. Okay, all righty, now let's look at example five. This is a quicker one, it's not as difficult. Convert eight miles per minute to kilometers per hour. We do need to know that one kilometer is 0 0.62 miles. We need to know that 60 minutes equals one hour. We want kilometers per hour, okay? So we start out with, we write our conversions. We have um, eight, min <coughs> excuse me, eight miles, one minute. 60 minutes is one hour. One kilometer is 0.62 miles go through and eliminate our commons, which is the miles and the miles and the minutes and the minutes. And we are left with eight times 60 times one kilometer and one times one times 0.62 hours. And we do our math and we end up with 774 kilometers per hour. Okay? <coughs> okay, all righty. Let us try one more that I will actually go through with you and then I have one challenge problem for you. We're going to convert five yards into inches. Two conversions, pretty easy. We know that one yard is three feet. We know that one foot is 12 inches. So we take five yards times three feet is one yard. 12 inches is one foot. Yards to yards, feet to feet. Five times three times 12 inches, because that's what we have left up here. There we are. And we have one times one on the bottom. So you could put your line here and put one. Five times three is 15. 15 times 12 is 180 inches. And that is the answer. That was a quick conversion. Really quick. All right, very last one I want to do. This is actually your challenge problem. This is example, we'll call it example seven, but it's your challenge problem. So remember that when you show me your notes, you must show me six examples. You don't have to do the challenge problem, but it's worth 10 bonus points if you're willing to do it. Okay, let's convert six days into seconds. Not too bad, is it? I'm even giving you a little bit of information. We know that one day is 24 hours. We know that one hour is 60 minutes, and we know that one minute is 60 seconds. Now all you have to do is set up your chart and find me an answer. Okay, I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a great day and I hope you will ask questions in class if you need them. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.